What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at a few applications that I really like using on my iPad Air. These apps don't really have any correlation to one another, they're just really solid and for the most part free applications that look and work really well for my iPad Air. So let's dive in and take a look at my top apps for iPad OS. But first, a word from our sponsor. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Zugu Case. Featuring a deceptively thin but highly protective design, the Alpha Case is built to give you stylus features and the most functional and protective design for the iPad Pro. The Alpha Case features not one but two slots for your Apple Pencil at the top for charging or on the back. You've got a built-in adjustable stand with eight magnetic angles, which is gonna give you a super secure viewing angle on any surface. The Alpha comes with a free two-year no questions asked warranty, has sleep weight functionality, and is awesome for traveling, office work, or anyone looking for a sleek and protective case. Click the link in the description to get your iPad Pro Alpha case today. And thanks again to Zugu Case for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. The first application I wanna take a look at is called Sketchbook. This is a free application from Autodesk. I've used a handful of different drawing and sketch apps for the iPad, but this is probably my personal favorite at the moment, and that's mostly due to the layout and usability. This isn't by any means the most capable design application for iPad out there, but it meets a great middle ground of having useful features and being approachable enough for a novice like myself. You've got this gallery view, which gives you a nice look at all the sketches you've done so far. I know some of you might be confused by the frames you see here, but if you wanna know what I did with these, check out the latest video on my personal channel if you're interested. Sketchbook allows you to add folders to save collections of images you've sketched out, and you can name these folders so you can have some separation and organization of your images. The app even has a slideshow mode if you wanna present your frames straight from the iPad. You can duplicate images within the application and even export frames as PSDs if you wanna throw them directly into Photoshop afterwards. One of the coolest features that I didn't expect this app to have is a time-lapse video recording feature, meaning you can record the sketch process being done in case you wanna show your work. So if you're an animation content creator and like to produce those speed drawing videos, this app can essentially enable you to do that, which is pretty cool. Within the sketch creator itself, you've got plenty of sketch tools, you can add images from the camera roll, and there are plenty of guide tools for maintaining geometrical accuracy. The responsiveness and the feel you get using the Apple Pencil is great, and overall I really like using this application for sketches. If you want to check out Sketchbook or any of the apps mentioned in this video, make sure to check the description. All the links will be there. The next app I use pretty much every day is an application called Vox. I've also done a review of this app on my personal channel if you want to check that out. But Vox is one of the more interesting music applications because it was built to consolidate music from a plethora of sources and give it to you in one unified experience. Vox will pull music from your iTunes library or music you have stored locally on the device. And Vox also has a cloud storage service that allows you to upload music files of pretty much any kind and play them back in full quality. As you can see here, I've got this 16-bit FLAC file playing straight from Vox's cloud service and it's playing very smoothly. In addition to being able to pull music from iTunes or Vox's cloud service, you can link your Spotify, SoundCloud, and Last.fm radio accounts as well. Spotify usage requires a premium account, unfortunately, and SoundCloud will only work if you've got a standard free account. It won't work with accounts with a premium subscription, but if that isn't an issue for you, then this is a pretty great app overall. Your Spotify music will appear in the main library next to your local music and your Vox Cloud content, and then your SoundCloud and radio will have their own menus where you can search for titles and content. And if you wanna make a playlist combining music from any of the different sources, that's what the collections menu is for. You can even play back YouTube videos within the app. You just have to copy a video link and Vox would recognize it automatically when you open the app up again. You can even save YouTube videos to your collections if you want, which is really cool. Vox has an EQ with presets that I've personally found to be pretty bad. It really distorts the sound in my opinion, but there are other pretty cool features like being able to upsample audio and enable different BS2B profiles. It's overall one of the more advanced mobile music players I've ever used, and this definitely isn't an app most people will be drawn towards, but for someone like me who doesn't get their primary music from streaming services, this is a really good solution and probably the best for iOS and iPadOS. LumaFusion might be an application you're already aware of, but if you're not and you're interested in mobile video editing, this is pretty much the only application you need to know about if you're on iOS or iPadOS. LumaFusion unfortunately isn't free, but I gotta say the price point for this software is pretty much fully justified for anyone who's going to consistently use this app for extensive video editing. 
If you've ever used Final Cut Pro or iMovie, then you should find the UI for LumaFusion to be quite familiar and workable. And because you're working within a relatively small canvas for editing, a lot of the controls are consolidated into these action buttons you see here. You can import photos and videos from your camera roll, but you can also import media directly from external storage devices like SD cards and SSDs. There's also a Storyblocks menu that gives you free music, sound effects, and stock footage to use within your products, which is a pretty cool feature. LumaFusion has built-in transitions you can use as well. Obviously these aren't crazy, but they're high quality and easy to throw on a timeline. The editor can also work with all kinds of footage. In my timeline here, I've got 8K H.265 video and 4K 120 FPS video, and all of it is an HDRP queue. And as you can see here in the color space settings, LumaFusion supports all of the major Rec. 709 and Rec. 2020 color space standards, which is really cool to see. You've got a menu for audio ducking and a bunch of other little features that all add up to make this software something you can use on the daily or weekly basis for video projects. If you're just trying to put together simple vlog videos and don't want to shell out $800 to $1,000 on a video editing machine, this is a great alternative. Or if you're just trying to start an edit on your iPad and transfer it over to your computer later on, LumaFusion for an additional cost allows you to do that as well through FCPXML exports. Jeff did a dedicated video on that last year if you're interested in seeing how that works. But when you're ready to export the final project, you can export to your camera roll, but you can also upload your project straight to YouTube or Vimeo, which is surely convenient for a lot of people. Overall, this is the best video editing application for iOS and iPadOS, hands down. And if you're interested in learning more about LumaFusion, check out some of our tutorials on the channel made by Jeff. Widget Smith is one of my favorite widget applications I've come across thus far. I simply like it for its customization in combination with having simple and minimal widgets. I'm not always a fan of crazy out there widget designs, and so the design of these are pretty appealing to me. You've got very simple widgets with a touch of cosmetic flair, but mostly meant to be more functional than aesthetically pleasing. When opening up the application, you've got three different widget sizes to choose from, just like any other applications. But the dope thing that you can do here is customize what time certain widgets will appear. So if I click on add a time widget, I get this menu that allows me to select a specific time block to have a certain widget displayed. And after that time is up, another widget of your choice will appear. That is a pretty cool feature and one that I didn't think I would care for all that much initially, but it is a genuinely useful feature for a widget app to have. As far as the widget types you've got, it's broken up into a few different categories. You've got time, date, photos, weather, calendar, reminders, tides, and astronomy sections that have a bunch of different options to choose from within them. And before you finalize the widget, you can of course set your location if that's relevant and select the color or theme of your widget. And as you can see, there are plenty to choose from. Overall, this isn't the flashiest widget application aesthetically, but it checks all the boxes for me as far as customization and functionality. And for those reasons, I'd highly recommend you check it out. Last but not least, we have my wallpaper application of choice, Unsplash. I really like Unsplash compared to a lot of other wallpaper applications, and that's because it truly checks all the boxes for me as far as what I require. It's free to download and use, they've got more than enough categories and options within those categories to choose from, and most importantly, all the wallpapers are high quality. You're not going to find potato quality wallpapers in this application as far as I've seen. Everything uploaded to this app is definitely wallpaper worthy in my opinion. If you're looking for something specific, you can use their search menu to look for a wallpaper that meets exactly what you're looking for. If I want to find a high quality Mac wallpaper, I can just type in Mac, search it, and it gives you a bunch of different options. And you have so many options to choose from because Unsplash is an open platform and you can upload images to the platform yourself as long as they're high quality images and meet Unsplash's other uploading criteria. You can create an Unsplash account to upload your content, but also create collections of photos you like and save specific photos to your account. I think the UI is extremely iPad friendly and I love the way it looks. You're not getting any ridiculous pop-up ads like some other wallpaper applications out there. And for free, it's a really nice app to use. I'd highly recommend it. But that's gonna be about it for this video. If you weren't aware of these apps and wanna check them out for yourself, be sure to hit the description box below. All of the links will be there. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't wanna miss future content like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Featuring a deceptively thin but highly protective design, the Alpha Case by Zugu is built to give you stylish features 
in the most functional and protective design for the iPad Pro. The Alpha case features not one, but two slots for your Apple Pencil at the top for charging or on the back. You've got a built-in adjustable stand with eight magnetic angles, which is gonna give a super secure viewing angle on any surface. The Alpha comes with a free two year, no questions asked warranty, has sleep wake functionality, and is awesome for traveling, office work, or anyone looking for a sleek and protective case. Click the link in the description to get your iPad Pro Alpha case today. And thanks again to Zugu Case for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.